good afternoon and welcome back uh, before i start i would uh, request all the members of the audience to post in their questions after the sessions or during the session uh, on the right side of the screen in the q and a dialog box moving on to our next session which will focus on integrating tvet vocational training in schools the session will include a discussion on the challenges of skilling in schools identification of steps to overcome constraints and strengthen the enabling factors to make skilling programs in school more impactful the panelists are shridhar shivastava director ncert dr rajesh kumbaya joint director pandit sundarlal sharma central institute of vocational education Nina Vadia, ORF slash NEP member. The moderator of the session is Lieutenant Colonel Gunjan Chaudhary, who is a serving Indian Army officer. He has the distinction of serving across the country, including at Siachen Glacier, and has participated in all major operations in Jammu Kashmir, among others. He is presently posted at National Council for Vocational Education and Training in Delhi on deputation as director. May I now invite all on the stage and request the moderator to introduce the panelists and start the discussion. Over to you, Mr. Chaudhary. Uh, good afternoon uh, uh, to our esteemed panelists and everybody who has joined us today uh, for this session. Uh, it uh, gives me ext uh, extreme pleasure to interact with the panelists, uh, Dr. Sridhar Srivastava, Dr. Rajesh Kambayat, and Miss Nila Vadia, uh, Lina Vadia, I think she has not joined out as of now. And seeing the their uh, uh, profile, it gives me an impression that we couldn't have had asked for a better panel to discuss this a very important subject and uh, important mandate of NEP 2020, that is integration of vocational education and training with school education. We all know from where the soul of this NEP 2020 has come from. It has come from our Honorable Prime Minister's vision, Kushal, Kushal, Bharat, Kushal Bharat, Kushal Bharat and Atmanirbhar Bharat. And recently, we celebrated one year of launch of NEP, that is National Education Policy 2020 on 29th of July. And there also it was emphasized upon that the importance of integration of vocational training and education with the school education as such. We observed during this uh, last one year that a lot of initiatives have been taken by various organizations. And these initiatives have been taken. Generally, we found after discussion, they were having conjoined. They were uh, standalone sort of initiative because it was initial one year and jointmanship was missing in that. And we need to integrate. The most important aspect is that we need to integrate now this all efforts which have been taken by various organizations uh, related to NEP 2020 to achieve the main goal. And uh, the most important aspect in that that we need to achieve is changing the mindset of people of considering the vocational education as a terminal education uh, and over vocational education as a aspirational one. Now, I should not continue and take uh, the time of the honorable speakers. May I request uh, Dr. Sridhar Srivastav to give you his views and also the initiative taken by NCAT and CERT towards uh, this uh, subject which we are talking about. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, may I know what is the time limit uh, that I have to... So, sir, sir, I think uh, we can uh, restrict each uh, each one of us can restrict uh, to li time limit of ten minutes as of now because we have already lost four to five minutes. Oh, of course, yeah. So uh, this is a nice opportunity uh, for me to interact. In fact, uh, as uh, uh, the Lieutenant Colonel Chaudhary was mentioning, the policy is very clear that uh, we have to uh, just turn this great resources that we have and we term it as a population uh, dynamic demographic dividend and all so into a good asset for the country uh, what i mean to say that uh, if we will not be able to somehow give purchasing power into each and every hands that we have in this country so probably we will be seeing the development by the consumerism great market only so we have to create that and the policy is very clear now which says that uh, 
there will be no hard separation as regard to learning no hard separation no there will be no hard boundary between the learning as regard to curricular co curricular extra curricular or as regard to learning by the stream we know that uh, as of now we had been having arts uh, commerce science similarly most importantly as regard to subject and vocational but just along with that one thing i just want to pitch here that vocational education is very important we all know but the policy talks about skills skilling so what i am trying to say that vocational education and skilling these are certain things which are often interchangeably used but what i personally feel that skilling is otherwise also very important vocational education has to be there but skilling is very important for any normal normal teaching learning process also for i i feel that in the in the learning of mathematics also skilling is important in the learning of statistics skilling is important in the learning of physics language everywhere skilling is important and we all know that the 21st century skills are much talked about because we know that it is also very important when we are working in a team then we need to know what are the ethics or ability that one requires to work in a team innovation critical thinking problem solving creativity collaboration so these are all the skills we talk about as the discussion is titled the steps which we have to uh, take in uh, reach realizing these goals so ncrt is already into that and since 2016 17 we are pitching our efforts towards uh, instilling in the mind of one and all that we have not to simply uh, just devote our time into rote memorization content mastery content load rather we have to instill competency in the children and that's why we have come out with the learning outcomes and those are notified in right to education act and we are moving ahead now we have for all the stages of school education that what are the learning outcomes which are required to be achieved by a child which is there at a great level and the kind of domains or subjects the child is involved in so these are very important initiative that in say ncrt has taken and presently when we are in a process of enacting national curriculum framework there also we are very much clear and this is a point of discussion in all our discourses discussion with uh, among ourselves and with the state functionaries that we have to now think that uh, how we can make children uh, ready with some core essentials which are very much required and then we should give opportunity to children uh, to uh, instill in themselves the other kind of skills like inquisitive questioning uh, discussion uh, and then uh, collaborative learning peer learning peer assessment child should be able to progress his or her own uh, learning what is there and what they need more how to use assessment as a learning so these kind of things we are going to bring there in the curriculum framework but a few points that bothers me which is very important and since we are at a forum where we are having our uh, other colleagues from the skill development and entrepreneurship Uh, we all know that nowadays education without skill or entrepreneurship is not going to get anything we all know but how to bring forth this into the system that also requires that the teachers and others who are involved in the system they should be very much aware that if we will not be giving opportunity to child to involve into such kind of activities and in our day to day teaching learning process if we are not equipped with such assessment practices that assess the child's progress into this kind of skilling then probably putting certain questions which are trying to gauge the problem solving ability of child multiple choice question that is not that would not be fair for the child to appear in such questions so what we are trying to do now in ncrt through our training mass training we are into nistat training 
which is a very mass training program. Uh, and there we are trying to put this aspect into the assessment practice that the teacher should be equipped with such kind of knowledge and understanding that in the class, if I have given a task to, to a group of children, four or five children, on what aspects I am observing the children and I am finding that there is some progress in the learning of these kind of skills. That is one point. Second point, what I uh, feel very, very important that uh, we now talk of uh, IR 4.0, where we are trying to amalgamate or we are trying to uh, make a sync between the traditional manufacturing and other industrial practices with the modern and smart technology. There, I feel it is very important that our students should also be aware about the other problems or concerns which is facing the humanity now. For example, the climate change or the soil erosion or waste management, water uh, conservation, and most importantly, the mental health of one and all. So these things are also very important. So what we feel that when we are going for all these modern gadget tools and all IR 4.0 readiness, that's very important. But at the same time, child should be also made aware about the culture and the cultural uh, uh, ethos, which are somehow providing some sound solution for handling these kind of situation also. So what I try to say that we should be always making efforts to create such an education system which is rooted to culture but having global relevance. So this is very important thing and for all we now know that we have to re-image the vocational education scaling and uh, that's very important uh, discussion that we are into today and uh, I think I have uh, reached to my time limit. So with these things uh, I stop here but I would be happy to answer questions if some are uh, thrown before me. Thank you. Thanks for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sh uh, Srivastav. A very valid point brought out by you. In fact, you touched the complete aspect what we were thinking and what we are talking about. And we at NCVET, uh, the National Regulators for the Skill Development and Vocational Training and also Entrepreneurship, we are aligned to these aspects what you have talked about and we are working that's why we are presently associated with the uh, ministry of education and uh, as a pilot we are working with the cbsc identifying the whatever aspects you have just mentioned we have identified certain 24 sectors as of now and uh, dr kambayat was also there in one of the webinars and uh, we have identified some job roles or some of these things at various levels we are going ahead with that the, here, the most important point he brought out was the traditional skills. Traditional skills are localized and actually are cluster based. They are, they, it cannot be nationalized or it can suppose we know that Urisa is famous for missionary skills. Obviously, that Urisa school, that NCRT, because they follow their curriculum, NCRT should make an endeavor that missionary uh, that curriculum should be there and should be given to the selected or it, the option should be there, should be made available to them. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sh uh, Srivastava. Uh, and I would like to welcome uh, Ms. Neela Vardia and uh, ma'am, uh, uh, very well, uh, good afternoon and welcome to you. And we have just started the, uh, the webinar and discussing about the very important aspects. And uh, we'll certainly would like to hear from you and what are your views and what are your experience throughout the world and also since you have been a consulting advisor for NEP2. Over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me and I'm very sorry that I had so many technical glitches that I, I couldn't join. I did not get to hear. Here, here, here the vocational skill comes ma'am. We will. You also need some of our technical skills. <laughs> No, no, there was a firewall issue. There was a firewall issue and Airmeet was not able to get through the firewall for some reason. So um, that's what it is. So yes, but that's a, your point is very well taken. It's good to know what are the options to try. And that's exactly what I did to get here. So vocational education is very important. I'm so sorry to have missed Dr. Sridhar Srivastava's talk. I was hoping to build on it. And uh, so, but I just want to say... Uh, any perspective, um, I think what 
what the NEP is do has done is put a lot of responsibility on all the adults in the system. By adults, I mean, you know, all stakeholders at uh, institutions like yours, NCVT, NCERT, PSSCIV, to all work together to do what is best for the student. And there are a few very important issues regarding deciding what is best for the student. Um, you know, we need to integrate the vocations into the classroom discussion. I'll give you a few examples. For example, if you're discussing the human body and you're discussing the circulation system on, and so on, there is no reason why you should not bring a blood report to the classroom, somebody's old blood report to the classroom and discuss how the health sector, vertical people who are phlebotomy assistants and so on, what is their job, what is the job of the back end of the people who analyze the blood what are what is what are we able to learn from it these make the you know the uh, the study of the human body very exciting to the students because it's like a mystery you are uh, taking a sample of blood and learning so much from it similarly if you're doing uh, you know studying the body you look at x-rays you bring a ct scan it's so complex you know they will not understand so young children may not understand all the technologies but secondary school students are very sharp their minds are racing you can tell them about what uh, you know, our humans have been able to do in terms of devising, um, you know, invasive and non-invasive invasive methods of understanding our body. Similarly, if you're teaching electricity, there is no reason why you should not uh, talk to them about how do the geysers actually heat uh, uh, our water or how is the, our homes wired for electricity. So that's the, those are the vocations of electrical and so on. So if we are able to successfully integrate um, uh, vocations into the classroom discussion, then we, we have a very good chance of success. And I was very happy to be to be sharing a stage with both uh, Dr. Sri Srivastava and Dr. Kambayat, because that is NCERT and PSSCIV, the, exactly the two arms that you need to actually bring this integration. So we need to focus on this integration going forward. Another comment I wanted to make about um, what should happen in, in integration of vocational education in schools is that we must choose the vocations very, very intelligently. Uh, because, of course, we have baggage of the past uh, that, uh, you know, vocational education has not succeeded. Then we are a caste and class ridden society. So the impression that vocational education is a second class uh, is for students who are not good at academics. All that is all history. But what I feel is that today we have a certain new opportunity. India's success in ICT and in software and services sector means that we can actually select very, you know, use ICTs as the leverage to integrate vocational education in at all levels in school. Because no parent is going to tell you, don't teach my child, uh, you know, data science or don't teach my child some, some uh, vocation to do with um, ICT, you see. So we use that as the thin edge of the wedge to enter into the classrooms of discussions of all these technologies. But of course, you cannot teach only ICT. You will have to teach, um, you will have to select a few vocations that you can introduce in class. And there even our handicrafts and arts and crafts for his historical value for you know our textiles are you know all the all the strengths that india has can be introduced but we must do it with the, with an eye to making sure that the local economies of the region can support that vocation. So the choice of vocation that we offer in each and every school can be different depending on the local economies. And this is a job for us adults to do, you know, because survey after survey is showing that young people, especially in rural areas, would prefer to be employed at the, in the area where they study. They don't really want to migrate and we need to live, hear them. We need to listen to them. So this means much more effort at, you know, understanding the requirement of various kinds of skills in various places. And of course, the third thing is that what is it that we are able to offer? So, you know, depending on, um, you know, shared resources, NSDC has a lot of resources. Um, there are many training partners which have infrastructure. So maybe the schools can share that and run courses. So all these considerations will come in. But if we keep in mind the fact that students need to be um, uh, you know trained in vocations that 
that will lead to jobs in their local neighborhood that will also help the last thing we we should not which i point i want to make with regard to choice of vocation is that we should not be tempted to teach lightweight vocations what i mean by that is that you know the secondary school is the time when t t students are learning you know their baseline their foundations they are many different things and so you know we should teach them very technical skills i i believe i strongly believe that because we don't need to teach them retail and tourism that's something that you can pick up in 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 a, a value added course later after you've passed out but you if you study ict you learn programming you learn uh, you know uh, visualization you you know all the many complex um, uh, you know, ICT uh, efforts that are happening at the back end to make all of us, uh, you know, use technology so easily. Those are the things that we need to uh, think about introducing students. So that's those are the things I wanted to say. One last point I want to say is that, you know, the, the absence of a career as a teacher in vocational education is hurting vocational education a lot. A lot, a lot, because nobody wants to teach it and nobody wants to learn it because there's no future in it. What we have suggested is that, you know, it is time to increase the diversity of faculty members in schools. We should consider hiring students with engineering background, give them a specially designed B.Ed. course. Uh, which we can we can design because NEP allows shorter length B.Ed. courses for subject teachers. Uh, give them a specially designed course on pedagogy and incorporate them in as faculty members into schools with regular jobs. And that will they can you can only incorporate them in regular jobs if you select uh, you know areas of expertise that are not likely to evaporate in two years or three years. You know you need to you need to have sort of strong baseline uh, uh, technical subjects that you introduce at school. So if you did that, then hopefully, uh, you know, uh, there is an estimate that we need 1.5 lakh vocational education teachers if um, we are to introduce vocational education uh, to 50 percent of learners by 2025. And the estimate is that today's number of vocational teachers available is 18,000. So we are really there's a huge gap and it's a huge employment opportunity. So we need to look at that, too. So these are a few points I wanted to stay in my say in my opening remarks. I hope they haven't already been covered. But even if it is, it just means that it's getting reinforced because it's important. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You in fact, you spoke my mind. Mind, in fact, I was thinking on this line and we keep discussing is that uh, the TOT which you are talking teaching uh, training of trainers and also assessors and the various aspect which you brought out that most important aspect which we uh, should take care is uh, that uh, giving some social acceptability to the vocational training. Yes. Now take an example, take an example. Previous, uh, I have attended the previous sessions also in this, uh, and they were all referring to labor market. First mm -hmm. of all, if you call it is a labor, you are totally then there is no scope of progression in this kind of field. Mm -hmm. They were talking about minimum wage. We should not call this as minimum wage. There is a there is a sector skill council which we have what we have proposed that name should be changed. It's called domestic workers sector skill council. Mm -hmm. We. If there is a sector skill council called plumbing sector skill council. Now, you and me or anybody would not like anybody to become a plumber uh, socially because sh though it is nothing wrong, the dignity of labor and everything is separate. But social acceptability is the most important aspect. This can make the vocational education at par with the general education. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Second thing, ma'am, you brought about about the integration of making clusters, which I mentioned also that clusters of schools with which can and the facilities which are because we in, in India, we are presently having 15 lakh plus schools mm -hmm. out of which 80 percent are generally elementary schools, mm -hmm. elementary schools. And we have these facilities with ITI, PMKK, PMKKYs and other uh, technical institute for supporting in form of labs and other issues that we should look into it and the aspirational part ma'am the aspirational part of teachers yes they if you may permit me yeah yeah please ma'am if, if 
fuel permit me i'll just add one line which i wanted to say which is that uh, you know you talked about 15 lakh teacher uh, school uh, schools uh, you know we have only 280000 secondary schools okay which have either 9 and 10 or 11 and 12 or both okay that is a manageable number there is no reason why we should go out to to and capture csr funds to have a good functioning ict lab in every secondary school this should be our starting aim if we have that like we said if we have engineering engineers as as vocational teachers many of them may be even in a position to be trained to manage that lab and then that lab has to be accessible to students even off after after uh, school hours so that students can can use it to the optimal so yes. that was the last point i wanted to make yes yeah. ma'am uh, aptly brought out ma'am and uh, we have 1.5 uh, in fact secondary school and 1. 3 lakh uh, uh, are uh, senior secondary schools it can be manageable and out of which 67% of the schools are government school and if government takes the initiative obviously anything can happen correct and uh, ma'am uh, both the speakers have brought out very very uh, apt uh, points and issues now i request the uh, dr kambayat to uh, bring out uh, the issues from his side Uh, good afternoon everyone thank you nsdc and uh, lieutenant colonel gunjan sir for inviting am i loud enough yes yes you are audible you are audible you are audible dr kumar okay yeah yeah thank you so thank you for this opportunity i think uh, the point uh, has already been set uh, for all of us that what are the things that ncert is doing and what is expected from nep 2020 now i would like to take this point forward what we are actually doing on the ground as a pssc iv the central institute of vocational education which is the only institution looking after vocational education into school education i think probably there are many exciting thing going to happen in vocational education as directly said my madam that uh, student at a early age needs to be exposed and in order to make this really happen into the schools what we have done at pssciv is we have developed a comprehensive guidelines we call it as a pre vocational education guidelines and this particular pre vocational education guidelines are for classes 6 to 8 and these guidelines are going to facilitate which madam rightly talked about giving students some fun based learning activities. integrating different aspect of vocational education into the school education subjects so like a science teacher a uh, history teacher a uh, uh, geography teacher you know english teacher all those are going to integrate different aspect of vocational education by undertaking fun based learning activity so that guideline has already been developed by uh, pssciv currently ncert is already reviewing that particular guidelines and once it will be finalized it will be rolled out uh, at the national level and all that by the ministry second important uh, is uh, uh, very important is for classes 6 to 12 i think as madam rightly said that this is the time where we need to emphasis more on vocational skill development now here ncert has again uh, revisited the entire uh, you know scheme of vocational education if you see few years back the book it was only focused on occupation skills but now we are looking in a holistic way by introducing employability skill earlier employability skill was somehow you know very marginally touched upon and it was not holistically looked into it so we have examined in indian context what kind of students will be looking employability skill which employers are looking at it and accordingly in vocational education we have integrated two major component the first component is on employability skill and the second component is on the occupation skills or the vocation specific skills within employability skill we identified five major component like communication skill ict skill or we can say digital literacy skill self management skill self uh, then entrepreneurial skill and we have also included first time the green skills as uh, dr shridhar shivastav sir was talking about climate change is a very important pressing issue for all of us and we felt that vocational education is also going to provide a large number of workforce for the industries 
and industries being the highest consumer of natural resources as well as contributing a lot to the pollution so it will be a right time that students are also made about the implications of environment or through the processes and the products and that's why green skills has been included and, all that. and probably this is the first time and it also gives me pleasure to tell you that this initiative of ncrt has been acknowledged at international level and this initiative has received the green skill award 2021 by european training foundation and this is one thing which we are trying to uh, propagate in the remaining years so you see currently psscib is working on 17 sectors and vocational education curriculums and textbooks and all those things ncrt is currently doing so at of, as of now 152 job roles have been uh, on which the learning outcome based that is based on the occupation standard the curriculum have been framed and already uploaded on our website as well as uh, 57 uh, textbook have been printed by ncrt so this is a new initiative we have complemented with digital resources so that uh, you know the student while sitting at home even the teachers can have access to this digital content and this is made available last but not the least the most important point madam rightly said is absence of qualified and trained vocational teachers and in order to address these growing concerns in vocational education pssciv has designed a very innovative program and we call it as diploma in vocational education and training it is a one-year program this program was initially launched in a contact mode but we have realized that the takers are finding it difficult because of lack of sponsorship or lack of deputation by the states and by the vtps and as a result we redesigned the program into a distance mode now there are only three months the vocational teachers who are undergoing the diploma will have to come face to face otherwise the entire spell has been redesigned we have designed a very beautifully you know learning modules for all the courses under the diploma program and it is now being offered into distance come contact program a lot of you know online support is made available to these vocational teachers this program also includes uh, practical training in industry school level internship so that they get real feel of vocational education as well as identifying specific problem and converting into a project work so that all we are doing for uh, making uh, you know teachers also well equipped and they can be the torch bearer at state level act as a resource person for implementing the ambitious target of 50 percent learners to connect with vocational education uh, so these are some of the things uh, pssciv has been doing it in the years to come our entire effort is going to be on how we can strengthen the existing vocational education we just started it and we need quality vocational education so our emphasis will be on how to bring quality into vocational education programs which have been already being offered around 13,000 schools and more than 13 lakh students currently taking the benefit. So in order to reach that target of 50%, so our focus will be on strengthening and expanding vocational education. And the most important thing will be how to introduce free vocational education. Because to me personally, I believe free vocational education is going to be a game changer. Because this is going to help the student change their mindset, change the mindset of the parents when they are going to share all those things. This 10 bagless uh, internship when it will be introduced, these experiences when shared by the children with their parent are going to bring a sea change in our approach, the way we look at vocational education in a larger way. So these are some of the things. Uh, I think uh, let me stop here for a while and maybe we can take the questions or any further observations. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Uh, 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 we have heard you earlier too and it was uh, totally different dynamics and uh, which you brought out uh, that, that the school education and the pre-vocational education which we discussed earlier that we should introduce uh, between 6 to 8 we should introduce as a hobby course or have hobby thing and there we should be able to identify the aptitude of the children that if they, they as per the aptitude then we can encourage with the help of their parents that 
uh, what field they should select for the 9 to that is the foundation stage between 9th and 10th and the advanced stage in 11th and 12th so that there is a progression proper and it is a proper planned progression and also in 6 to 8 we will not take it that nspf it is not uh, pre vocational it is not related to job obviously 9th and 10th we should be taking the nsqf uh, aligned courses so that he he or she a child gets a certification of certain level certain level and that is recognized and once uh, we should also give the facility of that having a mobility of multiple exit and entry with the credit system which we are about to launch in the vocational education credit has already been launched in the uh, general education the bank system that we are working on the credit system now the further further uh, one, that one point i would like to add with your permission yeah, yeah. uh because uh, class 6 and 8 uh, going to play a very important role we are now bringing vocational interest inventory which will be an online inventory which will be made available for students of class 8 so you know having experience gone through from class 6 to 8 and when a student reaches to a class 8 he or she can take this online vocational interest inventory and this will greatly facilitate not only the child but the teacher as well as the parent so selection of the vocation is very very important so what is his aptitude what is his interest and what are the kind of occupation that would be more suitable for him or her this is going to also help in our effort that we are trying to do so very soon this test will be made available we are also designing one more inventory we call it as a skill based aptitude test as recommended by nep 2020 so for class 10 this another test will be available so for the further life for the career for the occupation what kind of occupation he or she should do and it should be based a scientific approach to help the children in selecting the right occupation so this is another dimension pssciv is uh, taking up what uh, uh, rightly said by gujan sir thank you uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Kambayat. One more aspect which uh, uh, you mentioned, and we need to look into it that uh, what uh, this pandemic has uh, given us a challenge to have a different uh, education system that we should have a blended approach. Because uh, uh, if you see vocation, vocational education is more hands on training, it's 70% of the practical training vis a vis, and 30% is the, this thing. We have to devise a way and that there should be blended learning also and blended assessment tools also because of the present ongoing scenario. We need to have some views from Dr. Sridhar and also uh, other panelists uh, on this issue. Uh, you see, this is a very important point and you mentioned of the pandemic, but I would like to uh, view place forth my view in, in other respect also. There are certain locations uh, which the child in a school may be interested after going through this uh, pre-vocational exposure 6, 7, 8. And that may not be very viable depending upon the cost of uh, uh, running that vocation in that school. So herein, one thing is very important that uh, Madam uh, Lina Wadia was also mentioning and the blended approach can come to our rescue that we should map that uh, what are the vocations which are required for that area that the industries around in collaboration with them and the theory portion can be offered to the child by some uh, by leveraging information and communication technology and uh, through the virtual mode and for the hands-on practice, the child can move to the nearby industry. And then when the child come, uh, comes out uh, with that vocational course, completing that vocational course, child would be able to get consumed, get, uh, get uh, sorry, get uh, uh, involved in the uh, gainful engagement with that industry around. So blended mode is very, very important because the uh, cost of running a vocational course in school if we think in that uh, non blended mode totally uh, face to face might be some uh, some costly affair as we know that uh, there is dearth of teachers also so this is a point blended uh, approach is very much useful this is my view 
thank you thank you sir thank you uh, uh, there is there is some questions which are coming on the chat box and especially they are talking about the soft skills i i i i am fully aware that soft skills are very important and uh, these days what we are doing in the we are revamping our qualifications for the as uh, ncvet and soft skills are invariably their nosses are generally part of uh, any qualifications because this is soft skills then uh, what uh, dr sridhar was talking about the uh, in a, uh, that ecology and other green things and other aspects are being included including medical aspects are included one more question which is there which uh, uh, i would like uh, one of our panelists to answer is they are talking about the integration with respect to mobility from my school education to uh, this thing and the credit which is being earned from school education which can be transferred to the vocational education though i we are working on it but i want some of the panelists one of to answer on this issue which is uh, we have got question from in the chat box shall i take a shot at it and then yes. maybe both uh, uh, yes, uh, the other panelists can talk about so yes. you know the the issue of um, uh, 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 you know the fact that we neglected the vertical mobility of students from vocational education into higher education uh, the fact that that contributed a lot to the failure of vocational education implementation in the last education policy is something that we should remember but fortunately for us is the the good thing is that today work on creating the national skills qualification framework already exists work on creating the national higher education for qualification framework has been completed it is supposed to come into the public domain uh, very soon for consultation academia likes to work within credit frameworks a number of hours of teaching or interaction or projects and credits nsqf can be the bridge between what academia likes and what industry likes industry has been working with national occupation standards and qps and so on fortunately what is happening is that nsqf is linked to nosses and qps and nsqf is going to get linked to a credit framework and then the nsqf and the national higher education qualification framework will hopefully provide when if it is uh, properly designed when it is properly designed it will be properly designed it will provide the vertical mobility into higher education for students so what teachers and educational institutions will have to do is to learn to specify prerequisites for courses that if a particular course requires a mathematics course in statistics then you have to say it ahead of time so that if a student does not have a mathematics and statistics uh, statistics course they can take a statistics course and then come back and take this course so it is a we are requiring a change in mindset in the way that we are offering education at the moment that is what i'd like to say i think many people have understood but i think we have also understood that this is a very major task and a lot of effort is required and we will make some mistakes along the way but so long as we keep our focus on the fact that what we are trying to do with the students is to focus on what can you do with what you know rather than what do you know present exam system is about what do you know we have to fo change our focus to asking the students what can you do with what you know which is being able to apply their knowledge so uh, the pieces are all there but many gaps exist we need to all work together to glue it together thank you very much thank you ma'am thank you thank you ma'am uh, i think we are running out of time and uh, as the time says 44 minutes we were given 50 minutes and we lost initially but uh, we can still uh, uh, dr kambayat is smiling and he wishes to answer and say something and uh, dr kambayat yeah yeah you are uh, yes yes yeah so to add on to what uh, dr shridhar shivastav ji and uh, madam leena ji has already said about it first of all i think uh, this pandemic has uh, given us and shown us the power of technology earlier you know so icd was not so much in focus so you rightly said about blended technology or blended learning so i believe henceforth blended learning or blended technology is going to be a new normal whether there is a pandemic or no pandemic 
this is going to continue in the coming decade and that is going to create a new opportunity for creating learning avenues for the student so that's why this is very important you talked about blended uh, you know assessment system which is a need of the time absolutely true you rightly said about it let me give you one or two example here to illustrate the point the first example i am talking about retail sector while we were at uh, home and in pandemic you see the retail sector was one of the sector which worked behind the scene we were sitting at home and everything was getting delivered across the table and there were people behind the scene so there was a technology as well as you know the retail technical workforce which was working behind the scene now there are virtual uh, simulations are available for the student where base level skills are found uh, you know uh, to a certain level of skill can very well can be demonstrated can be transferred to the student this may not be true for all the sector but there are certain sectors where we can definitely make a beginning in india including health, health sector you know I, i have seen in some of the countries there are many advanced simulators are available in health sector which can really transfer the basic skills including some advanced thinking skill which are very very important to the job specific occupations and all that so blended are going to there and this is also going to help us in utilizing the power of ict technology so this we must do it and we should explore it we should experiment it as much as we can and take it forward and all that second thing is you know uh, while we are all doing about it the soft skill cannot be looked in isolation you talk to any industry any sector and you will see that the the employer is not only looking uh, you know the occupations but they want a task people i mean the workforce which is entering into the job are also equipped with certain good communication skills good digital skills you know these are all uh, you know fun fun functional skills which are becoming very important and that's why this uh, soft skill or we can say transversal skills or generic soft skill are going to be equipping the students and all that i have visited schools without vocational skill i mean vocational job uh, or uh, what we say courses and the normal schools and my experience is that wherever vocational education and vocational courses are being offered to the student the the confidence of the students are very different you can also feel it where a good vocational education courses are being offered you will see a big change in the personality of the student the way they speak they understand the the language they use the terminology they exchange between themselves and that is also going to help us in a big way you know uh, choices are very very important and in order to make this happen we are now working very closely with nsdc with ministry of education in taking another new 25 job role and this new 25 job role will be of the new age industries as said by dr shivadat shridhar shivasto ji for a while because we want industry 4.0 on the plane and we want occupations that you also rightly said that plumbing doesn't give a good notion to the student so um, that this new age students also requires new kind of occupations and vocation which are coming in the new years to come so we are now adding another 25 job role into our uh, into our kitty and very soon we are going to expand giving more choices to the student so that you know india is a very diverse country so for a student of northeast the patients and looking at vocational will be oh, different sir. than from dr kumbhad dr kumbhad we are spilling over the time next session is going to start uh, uh the, it, though the uh, subject is vast we have got limited time and uh, we, we had a very very fruitful discussion hope uh, this reaches uh, the concerned people we actually we are the concerned people but we not we need to have support from the ecosystem as such and uh, thank you everybody thank you for your valuable suggestions and it was a wonderful interacting with you and sharing your thoughts thank you thank you ma'am thank you everybody thank you very much thank, thank you thank you panelists yeah. for thank your you. insightful thank suggestions you. i hope it reaches uh, the concerned stakeholders and are implemented soon thank you lieutenant colonel kunjan choudhury for uh, conducting this session thanks a lot to all of us uh, to all of you for joining us today uh, now you may close the window and you will automatically log out the session thank you got it